possibilities. Okay, it's said that it's time for Alice to talk about packaging KD, bundling KD, because it's. All right. Okay. So, well, first of all, let me introduce myself a little bit. For those who just know that I am the guy who talks about the Slim Book. My name is. Yeah. Well, if you cannot hear me, just wave like that. I will take it as a sign. Uh, my name is Alex Paul. I come from Barcelona, and I've been developing KDE for for a while now. Actually, this February it's 10 years. Woo. Um, I work for Blue Systems, where we do uh, KD stuff and well, other things as well, but mostly KD, KD software and things around KD, distros and so on. And I'm also part of the KDV board. If anybody has a question about KDV things, we can discuss them later outside if you're interested. And one of the things I've been working on on my free time, because I, I also do KD on my free time, like my life is about KD nowadays, is um, Flatpak and Snappy uh, tooling and things. And that's what I wanted to talk about today. So before getting into the, um, into the subject head start, I wanted to talk about a bit the motivation, like why would KDE be interested in these systems? Maybe it's something obvious, maybe it's not. So before I say anything, who thinks here that it's obvious that KDE should be doing, well, container stuff? Okay. So for the record, it's about 20% of the room. Um, we've been doing software in KDE for 20 years now, and in KDE, we have a vocation for the end user. What we do in KDE is we make software so that people will be using them on their laptops and will be using them on their phones on some occasions and, and so on. Um, historically, we've done that through mostly through uh, the distribution kind of system where we basically publish a tarball file with full of text files most of them, well, C++ source code, but not exclusively, of course, and images and a lot of stuff, and then there's other people who build the, those. That's only for, for Linux, in fact. In KDE, we do other things as well. In KDE, we have some of our software works on Windows, some of our software works on OS X and on Android, and in some occasions, some even more uh, marginal architectures. and. And we've done all of that work because our, in, one of the important things for us is to make free software for people to use in their daily lives and, and to be able to, to enjoy the tools. And from my point of view, which is not a widely shared one, it, we've had a problem there, which has been that sometimes our users haven't had the, the our latest developments, and this has been a bad thing. This has been a bad thing because um, whenever we release a software, we consider that stable, right? And if there's a, a problem with that software, what we do is we, we fix it and we make another release. If the users are not getting this new release, the, uh, these users are well, handicapped on, on, on our software. And it's really frustrating for, for our developers to not be able to, to fix the, 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 the issues. And that, that, that's something that the, um, these, these systems try to solve. So uh, Pau was telling me now that he's not super sure uh, about uh, what these systems do. So I will try to summarize it a little bit. Um, both Flatpak and Snappy are, well, essentially very similar. Uh, they do have some differences, but in general, uh, what the, the opportunity they offer is to be able to distribute um, applications, like compiled applications that people will be able to use. Both of them uh, offer the, um, the possibility to execute those applications in a sandbox environment, which improves the, the, the security and the, 
facilities for, for the user to, to adopt those systems and, or those applications. And, well, that's more or less the idea. Um, is there somebody who still thinks he doesn't understand what they do? I know my definition was not great, but, um, well, if there's doubts, I can try harder. Uh, what's the difference between the two? <laughs> well, the, the difference is that they, they're developed by different people at different moments in their lives. So, well, while they were trying to solve the same problem somehow, well, they had different priorities at their moment mm -hmm. and different things. Um, from a very high level point of view, uh, I would say that Flatpak is far more focused to desktop applications. That's uh, uh, a difference. The other difference is that uh, the, the <coughs> model of this distribution, uh, Snappy has a centralized uh, repository by, by, like, by Canonical or Ubuntu. It's called store.ubuntu.com, and you will fetch from there. Um, Flatpak uh, expects everyone to have their own repositories, or at, at least it has been like that for a while. They also have thoughts of centralizing it. Uh, another very interesting thing from us that we are looking at both is that they are kind of converging into doing the same things. Like one started from one end and the other started from the other, and they were both very convinced. But then you see how they start to well, converge and go the, the similar directions. I, I think it's, it's important to understand when talking about this is that these technologies are not super mature. They're ready to be used and, and they do things like we will see hands on how, how it's, it's working today already. But that doesn't mean that in uh, one, two years they will be exactly the same as they are right now already. Flatpak, for example, they had an LTS release um, some some weeks ago, but uh, I am confident that we will see still some development and, and improving on the on the platforms together. But yeah, well, that's more or less um, what I wanted to say. So in general, for us, is to have the possibility to like when we have an, an, a new release of the application to be able to put it on 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 our user hands. One one example that that we use uh, to explain this in. Develop is that many of our users, for example, uh, are on universities. Universities, the systems over there are managed by system administrators. And one thing I've always uh, heard from these kind of people is that they tell us, well, we're using this, this software from five to ten years ago, which I understand. It's, it makes sense for. for um, well, these systems to use um, very stable bases, or, well, I wouldn't call them stable, but, well, it's the common mind share nowadays that all software means stable, right? But for us, when we make a new release with new features, we want to tell these people, well, use the new thing we are doing, right? Because we actually make fixes and we actually work on new useful features. But if these people, they cannot use this software, then, well, we still have some slightly unhappy users that uh, we won't be able to, to, to make happy up until five years in the future when the sysadmins decide to roll new versions of everything. And when they do, they will do it on all software at that point. And it makes sense like for kernels, it makes sense for even desktop environments, possibly, maybe. Actually, I don't really think so, but maybe. Uh, but it doesn't make sense for KDevelop, right? It doesn't make sense for Kate. It doesn't make sense for LibreOffice, I would say. If uh, the developers say this release is stable, then this release is a stable one. And um, if somebody disagrees, we can have a conversation on the question rounds later. I think it will be interesting. But um, us as KDE, what have we done? So how does that materialize? Uh, I guess that if you ask a known person, <coughs> they will tell you, well, we've developed most of Flatpak uh, together with Red Hat. So well, that will be their, their answer. We haven't developed Flatpak. We haven't developed uh, Snap, although 
some of our developers will have patches on either platform. Uh, but what we have done is we've tried to be on both platforms because we also see that there's none of them that is 100% what we want or that we think that well, we all we will have uh, users on both platforms, right? So we need to be on both in, in any case. So it's still not up to us to, to decide what, um, uh, where to be. So we've mo mostly been packaging applications. That doesn't mean it's been exclusively applications, but uh, it's been mostly applications. Applications is, so if you are on Ubuntu normal Unity, you will be able to install Kate on, on it, and it will make sense. If you are using Fedora, you will be able to also use Kate on it. And <coughs> the one coming from us, which is the one we are, um, well, on top of. Um, so n now I will go through all aspects of both and, and with, with the, what we've done on it. I will start with how would you install applications, then I will go through how to build applications, uh, KDE applications on, the, on those platforms, and then I will show you how we are integrating those platforms into uh, our software center. I hope that's interesting for you. I think it's really cool, but then I've done most of the work, so I'm not really representative. Um, how do in, to install a, a Snap? Well, there's two things that you want to install. In KDE, we, we have this thing, which is our frameworks. Uh, we also, all of our applications rely on Qt, which is a fairly big package. So we needed to at least share of the, one of those. Uh, many of the complaints that I hear whenever somebody talks to me about uh, bundled applications is um, how every application is, is, well, packaging all of all of the libraries and well, it's certainly something we, we, we didn't want. Uh, we don't want every KDE maintainer to have to maintain the compilations of all Qt and of all KDE frameworks. That's definitely something crazy. And of course, every time somebody uh, downloads an application, we don't want them to download all of Qt and all of KDE frameworks because that's, well, tens to hundreds of megabytes. That's not acceptable. But then for us, we consider it's acceptable to have a big package which would be the frameworks package, which has all of Qt, it has all of the KDE frameworks, and then have, well, <coughs> tens to hundreds of, of smaller applications to, that you, you can download and, and enjoy, and then have them all sharing this, this big frameworks package. So, um, if you want to read more about that, there's Harald's blog which uh, explains a bit how it's installed. Um, do we want to install an application? Sorry, you had a Just a quick question about the, the frameworks package. Is that um, the, the same for like, if you have a dependency on 5.8 as on 5.10, or is it, like, is it version, or is it like the KDE <coughs> frameworks 5 package? Well, in general, whenever there's a new version. Can you repeat the question? Oh, yes. The, the question is do we have to have installed many frameworks packages at the same time? And I would say no. No. Well, uh, in, b both in Qt and KDE frameworks, we, um, we offer backwards EBI compatibility. Mm -hmm. So any newer package would, would work with uh, an older one, which no. shouldn't be a problem for us. There's, of course, the possibility to do it. Uh, it's not something we're very interested. Actually, our interest is that people only have this one and to have to maintain this one, right? So, and we don't want to have to maintain different versions of, of frameworks or anything like that, like have to rebuild when SSL changes or whatever. So yeah, that's one thing. Um, and then to build those maps, I, I will go through uh, more or less what the manifest file looks like. I will try to go very fast because I don't think it's super interesting, but I still want to, to look into it. Uh, first, I want to show you the <coughs> repository. Oh, I've lost the mouse. The repository we have for uh, manifest <coughs> files. So the idea is that while um, not all of the applications are here because in KDE we have more than three, those three, we want uh, 
application maintainers to maintain the, their manifest file somehow so that they get to decide when they want a new dependency or they don't want it, they get to modify it and have the application compile like that. Um, we are still beginning, we're, we're first starting, and actually what we're doing nowadays is um, using the neon packaging for creating the snaps, which is basically magic uh, Harold worked on, and it allows us to have virtually any KD application available, uh, like right now, not, not in some months, but now, which is something we, we welcome. So that's more or less how it works. Um, so on the manifest file, what we um, specify is, well, names and how we want the application to be confined. So the, the information we have on the manifest is more or less the information that uh, Snap, the Snap system will have of our application when, once it's running, right? So there's name, version, summaries, for because Snap is also at the moment the system uh, Snappy uses for, for listing applications and showing them on a software center. Also, um, we need to tell it what uh, kind of things our Snap will be doing to communicate with the external world, right? This is um, those plugs. If I say something really wrong, tell me. No, but uh, um, so these, these plugs, do they plug into the um, uh, I am not an expert, but the idea is that uh, you request these plugs and then the system provides you with the other things. So it, it's a modular system. But uh, there's Snap uh, developers over here, so well. You can find them and then ask them these questions. Also, Harold will be able to answer you these questions better. But more or less here, the idea is that uh, uh, here, for example, we're saying we need Unity 7, and it says here notifications. Well, what Harold meant when he wrote that is that you need to have uh, somebody listening to you on that end. So when you tell it things, well, these notifications happen on the on the system side, right? Because if it's confined and nobody gets to listen to your application, then you can send notifications, but they don't want to show on, on, the, on the system, right? And then um, that uh, exposing the KD Frameworks uh, package uh, on, so when our application is compiled, is using the, the shared frameworks thing on the, on the build time. Uh, on the previous slide, uh, you have a dependency on uni Unity. Does it mean you handle uh, Unity as part of uh, the KD snap? Yeah. Well, no. We won't distribute Unity with every KD application. That's the question. <laughs> it's just the name that uh, they used for, for naming some interfaces. And think about it's, it's allowing a part more to access. Through. Think about it as a permission system. You're basically requesting permission to talk to Unity 7. That's what this line is basically saying. What it's really doing is opening up a D-Bus interface that lets you yeah. talk. Otherwise, you can't send and receive certain messages on the D-Bus. So Harold suggested for the microphone that it's uh, you can think of it as a permission system. Um, genuine question. There was an earlier question about how you depend on a version of, of the KDE frameworks, if you can. I don't, I don't see that here. <laughs> somewhere else, because if you use the plugs thing, I don't see how that has certain things in it. So there's this part, which, oh. Harold, can you explain it? You will do it better. Come here. Um, so to quickly answer the question, the way you would do it right now is probably through a different package name. So you've... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've seen how the... The thing is called KDE Frameworks dash five, right? So if you wanted a version, it would be dash five point six. Right now, I don't think you can actually lock it on versions. Do you need a new API that's in five point ten or whatever? Uh, do you ask for that? Is there a way? There is no way. Okay. Not right now, anyway. So you would have to do this yeah. way through through the separate package. But beyond that, um, there's no way. 
Well, essentially, the idea would be that you will always have the latest frameworks version, right? What's the what's the point of compiling against an older version? Yeah, but, I mean, so they have different channels and stuff, right? So it might. So you might have like one version of development in Edge or whatever it's called. Yeah, but if you see it failing, then you will change your channel into a newer one, and then it should work. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's another question. Are the old interfaces DBus based, or we've seen uh, OpenGL on the other side, uh, slide, so that means that, that... I think you should really ask canonical people to give you a snappy yeah. presentation. <laughs> oh, I think it would be great. Well, what, for, for what it's worth, I'm not a flatback expert either, so <laughs> maybe this will be a horrible presentation. Um, anyways, um, what we do on, on flatback, you will see it's, it's fairly similar. Uh, like I said, on, on Snappy, the, the repositories are centralized, that's why you just install things. Here we need to uh, add the repositories with, with things as well. Um, what we see here is that we are adding uh, a KD remote, then adding installing the platform file from it, and then you add another remote, which is the repository we have for applications, and then we install an application, which in this case is Ocula. Um, yeah. We have a wiki you can look at. Wow. And, well, you will see all of the information there. So, as, as you can see here, we have more or less the same structure we had on, on Snap. We have the, the platform with all of Qt and KD frameworks and some integration packages. And then we have the application elsewhere with only the, well, the application itself and other libraries that will not be on the, on the platform, like uh, Ocular in this case, it has Poplar which is the um, library they, they use to render um, PDF files and so on. So also Flatpak has a technology to talk to the outside um, beyond the uh, similar system that um, Snap has with the, with the plugs. Um, it also has the portals, which basically are standard interfaces that are present on, on Flatpak as a platform so that you can request things. So for example, the normal uh, open file dialog, you will, instead of implementing it inside of the application, you can request for full file system access. What you do is you just make a Flatpak call to the Flatpak uh, portal, and then Flatpak will do the file navigation with all of the privileges available and then give you the file somehow. And well, we do have some implementation of it. You can look at this blog later and you will see what's what. And then, well, the command to build an application is this one. In, in, in Flatpak, you need to install the SDK, which is basically the header libraries that are required and, well, some compiler stuff. And then run this beautiful line that didn't fit on the screen. This is what a uh, manifest file looks like for Flatpak, where you basically, well, you say, which is your runtime, which are the things you need from the outside, and then the libraries you might need, and then the application, and then you compile it. Now it might be a good moment to look at an application opened on those platforms. Let's, let's see if I can do it without without messing up too much. Ba -ba -bum. So we can uh, flat back. So um, the Applications uh, repository we have uh, for Flatpak is actually quite new. I uploaded it for the first time on Thursday. Um, but we've been working on the applications for a while. These are the applications we have packaged nowadays. Uh, we can install one. Oh. 
but we need to tell it the repository and now of course it needs to install it oh well it's already installed but you can believe it works <laughs> I didn't make flatpak though uh, and that's uh, ocular being run in flatpak uh, this is not running the the um, the portals yet it's uh, just requesting the access to the full file system but then you can see if we go up here <coughs> there is an app directory which is actually where the application is mounted so this is not the root file system of, of my system it's just the mounted system on 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 flatback uh, on snappy let's see what snaps I have installed because we don't have a lot of time um, bum, bum, bum. We can run scumvm, who doesn't love scumvm? Boom, oops. Okay, now no, it's gonna work. I use snap run, snap run scumvm. <coughs> oh yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, no, that's not super. Uh, I should have a KD okay, application. Which one? K blocks. K blocks. K blocks. Sudo, right? Sudo snap install K blocks. This is another application, single game, and then I could can play here. It's awesome. <laughs> now you can, oh, for fuck's sake. Um, then we can look at the uh, software center integration. Uh, we will look first at Discover because it's the one I did. I will open it with just the Snap backend. Because, well, then it's a bit easier. <coughs> I we could have installed the application now. Which one, uh, which application we have as well? Do we have Ocula? Ocula. Yeah. Ocula. You get to open it, install. And we wait. We don't have progress. That's great. Well, while it installs, we can, because we don't have a lot of time, we can look at the video Jan from Red Hat did with the integration for, on Flatpak for, um, Discover for Flatpak. <coughs> you can see it works, it's on a, on a branch and it's actually not compatible with master, so um, I don't really want to install it now. But you can see listing works and You get to launch the application. Huzzah. And, well, let's see if um, OculoWare is installed or, or I still have console. <laughs> Ocular needs to be recompiled. So that's, that's it. Um, there you go. So I wanted to discuss a bit uh, future things, which is basically we would like to have it better in integrated in KDevelop, which, uh, well, should happen soon if we find somebody to do it. If you're interested, please say hi. Uh, we would like to see if, how hard it would be to have Plasma on those systems as well. We have two approaches to it, none of them work, but we're hopeful they might someday. And you have maybe half a minute for a question. No? Uh, 
where do you see the, ma the main use of uh, these, these two uh, ways of delivering applications? Because normally KDE is bundled you know, within the operating system. Well, KDE is not software, KDE is a community, right? Yeah. Plasma, though, is usually bundled on with the system. It's something you might still get with your distribution, but that's not necessarily what will happen in 20 years, right? Yeah. 